In this video, we'll continue our discussion of wind, but we'll be looking at planetary winds, and winds that occur over the entire Earth. To begin, let's review the concept of convection. Previously stated, we said that as air is heated up from being over the surface, a warm surface, that air rises. Once that air ascends into the upper atmosphere, it begins to cool off. It's now further away from the heat source, the land, that heated it up, so now it starts to condense. And as it condenses, it begins to cool and it begins to sink, becoming more dense and therefore coming back down to Earth. And this creates a cycle. Air's rising over warm surfaces and sinking over cool surfaces. If I replace those words with um, density, we have rising air that is less dense, and we have sinking air that is more dense. And finally, if I replace those words which involve density with pressure, now we have low air pressure and we have high air pressure. And that's really the most important thing to remember, is that when air is rising, it creates low pressure. When air is sinking, it creates high pressure. Okay, one more important thing to remember before we go forward, the color red is always going to mean low pressure, and the color blue is always going to mean high pressure. All right? This is in your reference table. And this is on page 14, demonstrating the global air currents, or the prevailing winds, on Earth. All right, so let's take a look at what this diagram shows. So right here, where that red arrow, yellow arrow, blue arrow so on and so forth. That's demonstrating the convection mechanism. You have air rising over the equator. As it gets away from the equator, it's sinking down. That's the blue arrow now, and it's sinking down over 30 degrees north. That same thing is happening in the southern hemisphere over 30 degrees south. And that actually is repeated multiple times on this diagram. If you look at any of those little circles of arrows, they're showing you the same thing. Air is always rising over um, you know, a certain latitude and sinking over another latitude. So if I summarize some of that activity, I could say anywhere where the air is rising, we call that a wet area. That's zero degrees, 60 degrees north, and 60 degrees south. We call that a wet area, and this is something we'll be getting into later on this week. As air rises, it picks up water vapor as it goes up. That's what forms clouds. It's a big factor in making clouds is rising air and evaporation. So here we have wet zones because the air is rising. It's low pressure. And where the air is sinking, and where the air is sinking, we have dry zones. Okay? That means the air is condensing or getting denser and coming back down to Earth. All right? And that happens at uh, 30 degrees north and south, as well as the north and south pole. Okay, remember how I said blue and red, very important, goes back to low and high pressure. So now I'm gonna add in those words. So wherever we have a low pressure situation, uh, that's a wet area. Wherever we have a dry pressure or dry area, we have a high pressure situation. If I have high pressure, I'm gonna have air leaving because high pressure is a place where air is moving out of because it's trying to find um, low pressure situations. So if I have a high pressure zone, the air is going to be moving away. And in this case, it's moving from 30 degrees north or 30 degrees south towards the equator. Um, if you look at the above pressure zones, we have air moving away from those high pressure areas to those low, low pressure areas and even taking into account the north and south pole, we have air moving from high pressure to low pressure. So it's a very um, repeating pattern. I know it seems very confusing, but in all circumstances, air is always traveling from high pressure to low pressure, and those pressure differences are set up because of convection currents that are happening over the entire Earth due to unequal heating. Now, just one additional part to this. I've seen it referred to on the regions, and it will come up probably on a test or two. An area of divergence means things are moving apart. 
whereas an area of convergence, things are coming together. So if I look back at my page 14 reference table diagram, where I have arrows coming together, which would be something like 60 degrees north or zero degrees, the equator, or 60 degrees south, two arrows are headed towards each other. Those are areas of convergence. That means wind or air is moving toward that place. If I have air moving away, like the North Pole, 30 degrees north, 30 degrees south, or the South Pole, those are areas of divergence. I have air moving away from those layers. So convergence goes along with uh, low pressure, and divergence goes along with high pressure. So just so a couple of things to kind of sequentially remember is that on this page 14 reference table where it says dry, that's referring to high pressure and that's referring to divergent areas. And where it says uh, wet, that's referring to um, low pressure and convergent areas. And uh, one more thing, um, take a moment to think about this. Why are all these arrows curved or the jet streams? Jet streams are fast bands of easterly moving air due to Earth's rotation and global convection currents. Here's a look at our um, northern hemisphere jet stream. Notice it's going in a circle around the Earth because the Earth is rotating. It's not rotating in this picture, but if it was, you'd get the sense of why this air is moving. Notice it's blowing over the United States, okay? And it's not always in the same shape slash pattern. It does break up, break apart, and move differently and swirl differently. There are really two jet streams that impact the United States. Um, those are called the mid-latitude jet stream, all right, that happens kind of on the border of Canada and the United States, and the subtropical jet stream, which happens much closer to the tropics. And it's the mid-latitude jet stream that actually has the biggest impact on our weather from day to day to yearly conditions. Um, of course, seasonally, we have very distinct weather patterns, but a lot of the weather patterns that we're used to are driven by the jet stream. Because vertical rays are shifting north or south of the equator, they impact this mid-latitude jet stream. During the winter, more heat gets directed toward the southern hemisphere, and therefore the Tropic of Capricorn. So the jet stream actually dips down south, dips further down, because there's warmer air further down south, so that jet stream pushes down. That brings us a lot of wet weather and nor'easters, as you see the bottom blue arrow. During the summer, the heat's directed towards the northern hemisphere, and our jet stream pushes up, and that brings a lot of nice dry air through the United States during that time, because it's coming from um, mid-regions of Canada. And uh, that's where air is a little bit cooler and a lot drier. Uh, so altogether, this really changes or controls, more better word, the uh, weather conditions that we see in our area, but also across the United States. And furthermore, that jet stream carries all weather across the United States. And, and very, very basically, if you look at a weather report and they're telling you weather that's happening west of us, you can always assume that that weather is coming towards us. So all weather in the United States always travels from west to east, and that's because of the jet stream pushing it across the United States. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching.